Yet life, as usual, had other aspects, and people went about their pleasures as they always do when history leaves them alone. Maybe you went racing. If you did, you cheered a little jockey called Donahue with the great cry, come on, Steve. Or you went to Wimbledon, where there was much excited talk about an amazing young Frenchwoman called Suzanne Langlon. If you were very fortunate, you were present at the Oval that historic day when Jack Hobbs made his 125th century. In those years, too, sport began to be big business. Millions paid to watch football. Even the immense new stadium at Wembley couldn't hold half the Welshmen who came to see Cardiff beat Arsenal and take the cup out of England for the first time. Up north, we saw the early days of a sport that by 1930 was giving so much pleasure to so many people that the government had to inquire into it. Australia, not content with cricketing triumphs, sent a team of noisy young men on roaring motorbikes to take new honours away from us. And there was motor racing at Brooklands, for the petrol engine was truly showing its paces, helping to set the temper of the 20s and the years that followed. Yet we'd won a war. It was possible to believe it was the last. And we were still a great power, weren't we, Lord Ravison? Those years weren't failures either. Think of the miraculous flights by men and women. And on ground, Malcolm Campbell, Seagrave. Great people, these. And in them, I believe, were best expressed the impulses of the century. <laughs> seem very remote now, those flying meetings we held from 1908 onwards. A new epoch started when Wilbur and Orville Wright first took off and flew in 1903. At those meetings you might have seen Graham White, say, giving a little instruction, or Gustav Hamel, or the Frenchman Pegu, who first did aerobatics. Then there were Cody, Sopwit, Hawker, Charlie Rolls, A.V. Rowe, de Havilland. The thrill it gave us to hear of that magnificent flight when Alcock and Brown first conquered the Atlantic. Ross and Keith Smith, winners of an amazing first flight to Australia in 1919. Lindbergh. First man to fly the Atlantic alone. Then Kingsford Smith, whose flights in his famous plane, Southern Cross, were really tremendous. These men and women alike gave all they had to aviation. People like Jim Mollison, Amelia Earhart, later lost in the Pacific, Gene Batten, and many others. Best remembered, of course, Amy Johnson. A genuine pioneer was Sir Alan Cobham. I wish we could name them all. But all true flyers share in each other's achievements, as we did in the Schneider Trophy days. love of beauty, his technical skill, his aspiration for the heights. That is aviation, the poetry of flight.
Yes, it's a great pity their achievements weren't equaled in other things. The League of Nations failed, the conferences failed, and in the end, peace failed. Why is it that our best ideals seem doomed to wither? Maybe it's from trying to force them with large, centrally heated buildings. Anyway, if the 20s didn't give you ideals, they gave you plenty of other things to believe in. Anything as long as it wasn't Victorian. It was dead, finished, wasn't it? Gone with the petticoats and the antimic castle. Ride my golden dream boat, glide with me Down the silver beams of my baby dream let me hear again that melody Mammy used to sing to me Let me And my clothes are only lent All the same, she'll think I'm just fine How I've dreamed, how I've schemed And at times it's almost seen That the sun would never, never shine That's why I'm going, yes I'm going but Mighty soon I'll be hello To that cold black mammy of mine Cause I'm going, yes I'm going With the love that's ever growing To the cold black mammy of mine Not a cent, not a cent And my clothes are only lent All the same, she'll think I'm just fine how I've dreamed, how I've schemed, and the times have always seen that the sun would never, never shine. That's why I'm going, yes, I'm going, mighty soon I'll be hello to the cold black mammy of mine.